It's going to be good, I'm just saying. It's going to be good because it's the Word of God. So before we get started this morning, I want to take a second to just to pray. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to pray because I want you engaged in this prayer. And that is simply this. We're going to pray for the Lord to speak and that we have, because He will when the Word is read, so we know He's talking. But that I have ears that hear and eyes that see and a heart that understands. And that I'm given steps to do. So it's one thing to hear, but it's a whole other thing for you and I to be able to put some things into practice when we leave this place. Amen? So we're, we're going to pray this morning. Father, thank you this morning that we, as your word is open, uh, that we have eyes that see, that we have a heart that understands. Lord, thank you that you're speaking to us. You're giving us direction. You're giving us uh, the how to do in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and amen. 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 That's a big part, isn't it? Our amen is a big part. How many of you know um, amen is only possible, uh, it really is only said when you're present? Otherwise, we'd be just saying amen, and people would be like, what? A present word, when you're, there, when you're present with the prayer, this is when you say amen. All right? So we're in this series called Back to School back to faith school, and this was actually the first full week of school. How many of you got through, you know, pick up and all that stuff? So if you have kids, some of you are like, I don't, my kids are gone out of the house. This does, week doesn't make any difference. For some, it's like, this is the big deal. All right, and so we had our first full week. This is actually week three in back to school. Just a little bit of background of, uh, of week one. We are taking this whole series like you just got into school. So a lot of what we're doing is like the first week of school, but some of it's going to, you're going to find it's like as you go through school, these are some things you got to got to get, got to have, got to understand. And so week one, we talked about the textbook. You know, when you first get to school, you know, you got to get your book cover. I, I saw somebody the other day, anybody here this morning have a book cover on their, on their textbook? Anybody got, in other words, it's that cute, like, look back here, she's got a book cover. Anybody else got a book cover? You know what I'm talking about. I, you got the case, you got got the highlighters, you got the, we used to cover our Bibles and carry everything we needed inside a, a little um, zipper thing and maybe, so cool, right? Trapper keeper. And so we, we had textbooks handed out and we talked about the Word of God and how the Word of God, it really is truth. It's just truth. It is the baseline. It's how everything in life is built. And we talked about it, it is the plumb line. The biggest skyscraper is built by something that's really little, a little bubble on a level. It's the plumb line. You think about that everything that's built right and, and remains and stands and doesn't fall, it's that little tool called a level or this little teeny bubble that is the plumb line, so to speak, that everything is built off of. Everything is level and everything goes up. It's, it's how I, everything's navigated. It, it, they put, if the door's not closing properly, you know what they check? They check if it's plumb. Why is the thing, what, they check, why is it out of square? What's not working? It's this little plumb line. And the word of God, it is true. It is truth. And this, we talked about how this is the place that we uh, base all of our life. And, and this whole series is out of this premise of uh, Luke 18, 8, which is this. When the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? Luke 18, 8. When the Son of Man returns, is he going to find faith on the earth? And I, I, he's asking this question, but I think it's good for us to answer that. Instead of just sometimes we just sit there uh, and, and not respond. You know, when the Lord's asking a question, I think you, could, you and I could respond just like Peter responded when, when all the disciples are being asked the same question, who do you say that I am? And Peter pipes up. Sometimes we've got to pipe up instead of just think that, you know, it's just going to, we, 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 every person's going to have to answer. Every person's going to have to stand before the Lord one day. It's good that we learn to practice answering now. So will I find faith on the earth when I come? And we got into week two, and we said we were talking about how when you go to school, you get that black Sharpie out, and everything, moms and dads, they write their names on their folder, on their water bottle, on the lunchbox, because they, that's theirs. And we talked about how you got to have your faith, and it's your faith. And so we said, we, we said this, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith? And Chad was sitting right there, and I said, will he find faith 
in your house. And you, where, where, where are we going to find faith? You're going to have to assign your name. You're going to find faith in the Hatman house. You're going to find faith in the Schlegel house. You're going to find ha- faith in the Zolly Copper house. You're going to find faith in my house, in the Howard's house. You're going to find faith. Are you going to find faith? I don't know. Is it going to be in your house? Whose house? The Howard's house. Whose house is it going to be in? It's going to be in the house that you say, as for me and my house. You're going to have to make that declaration. So that was week two, talking about how you have personal faith and, and how faith is not something, it's, it's personal and it's of the heart. It dwells in the heart. It's what you believe. Where do you believe? In your heart. And so we established that how, how God was getting uh, the, his, his disciples to move from approaching him and living with him based on what they saw, felt, and touched. And so after Jesus had uh, died on the cross and he was raised from the dead, he, he appears to his disciples, and he, there are two of them walking on the road to Emmaus, and, and, and he's, he's joined with them. It says, but their eyes were refrained, their natural eyes could not recognize him. So Jesus is there. His voice is, hasn't changed. He's not trying to talk incognito or something like that. He's just, it's just, but it, in a sense, their, their senses, and we talked about how Senses, so many times we live by our senses, and we're, we're not to live by our senses. We're to walk by faith and not by sight, and we'll look at that here again in a moment. Just reiterate, live more aware. We'll actually hit that right now. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 7 through 10. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 through 10, really all of uh, this whole chapter, um, 1 through 10, it's this conversation where Paul's talking to the church at Corinth and he's saying, hey guys, I want to talk to you about what you can't see. I want to talk to you about eternity. I want to talk to you about how when someone dies, they're, they're, they're no longer exist where we can grab them or touch them or feel them, but to be absent is to be present with the Lord. In other words, he's saying, I want to bring your and my awareness to what is real and how we're to navigate our lives based on what we can't see or touch or smell, our five senses. We're to navigate our life and we're to walk by or live by faith and not by sight or our senses. Next verse. And he says, for we are confident, and I say, and we prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. In other words, this is awareness. If I, go, if I was to die today, I'm going to heaven. So there's an awareness for Paul of what exists outside of what he can see, feel, touch, or smell. There's an awareness. Are you aware of what you can't see, feel, touch, or smell or hear? Is there something more that you and I should be navigating our lives by than just what it looks like, what it sounds like, or what we see or smell? Like there's got to be something more. There is something more. And Paul is talking to the church and talking to us and saying, you were to navigate our lives by, by this way. We're to live by faith and not by sight and aware that there is eternity or there's life after this life. Next going, or next verse. So we make it our goal. And because we're aware of this, we say it in this modern Nate translation, And because we're aware that there's something more than what I see, touch, feel, or smell, because I'm aware of that, I now make it my goal to please the Lord. Like, I live this life aware of what is just not. So, because I'm aware of that, I'm also, I'm aware, I also engage with that. We're talking about just walking by faith, walking in conversation, walking in fellowship with the Lord. It says whether we are at home in this body or away from it. And then it says this. It says because one day we're going to all stand, verse 10, uh, one day we're going to all stand or appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due for the things while done, the things that were done in our body, whether they're good or bad. In other words, how many of you know it's so much easier to, to, to not take the cookie when mom's watching? Just because you're aware that somebody's in the room. Can I talk about character for a moment? When you're aware that somebody is in the room. God is in the room. He's in their car. As someone cuts us off, he's in the car. He's on the football field. He's in the locker room. He's in the moment when you're telling your mom and dad what you're telling them, whether you're telling the truth or a lie. You might think you're getting away with something. But you're never getting away with something. 
Because there is something that you can't see, touch, or feel that is very present. So we're talked about this, about how you and I are to navigate our lives uh, by more by, not by, but by faith, or not by sight. And so Jesus is walking the road to Emmaus with his disciples, and their eyes are refrained, their ears are refrained, their senses can't sense that it's Jesus. And as he walks, they, they walk that road, it, it, what happens is, is they're sad, and, and Jesus is like, why is your countenance fallen? What's going on? And they, and they said, did you not hear about what happened in Jerusalem? What, how this man of God, G, Jesus, how he was crucified, and we had hoped he would save us. And, and, and Jesus actually rebukes him and says, are you so slow and dull of hearing? Do you not, are you only using your senses? And he opened the scriptures to him, and, and they, all the way back to Isaiah, and he began to talk about the prophecies and the word about Christ. And, and as, as they came closer to the village, they, they said, hey, can you stay with us? We were so heavy, we were so sad, we were so downcast, but while we walked with you, there was just a joy in us. This is what happened. I mean, this is what they're not giving words to, but this is what, can you stay for dinner? We'd love to have you over for dinner. Man, this guy, he's awesome. This guy. It's like we go way back, right? It's like I, it's like I feel like I've known you all my life, right? And, and so as they sat down for dinner, Jesus broke bread and he blessed it. And their eyes, natural eyes, were opened. In verse 32, if you go, if you go there, uh, uh, Dalton, this is in um, Luke 24, verse 32. It says, and they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us? Did not our hearts burn within us? while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. And so this is what the Lord wants. He's making a transition here where he walked with them, and now he refrained them from seeing the natural way, and he said, I want to lead you a different way, and I want to lead you from the inside. And he said, I'm gonna, I'm, it's better that I go away, John 14 and John 16, because I'm going to send you a helper. But he's no longer going to be like me where he dwells on the outside with you and he can only be, you know, Peter, James, and John, us three, you know, on the Mount Transfiguration. But everybody can be included because he's going to dwell in you and he's going to be with you and, and he's going to bear witness, testify on the inside that he's, that, that, that who he is. He's going to lead you and counsel you and remind you of everything that I've said. And he's also going to show you things to come. He's going to give you the, yeah, that's the girl, marry her. And that's the car, not the car. Nope, that's not the car. That's not the, he'll, he'll lead you in everything. He'll be a counselor. He'll talk you out of some stupid things you were about to do he's going to be right there and sometimes even after you have a stupid thing that you were about to do and you just went through and did it anyway you said it you just yeah. he's like all right okay well uh here we go let's see, see how do we walk you through and navigate because sometimes we can royally mess some stuff up but he can make a way when there seems to be no way even when we mess some stuff up so thank God for the Holy Ghost, for the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells on the inside of every believer. We have a helper. So we have, we have faith because uh, in, in a textbook that is the plumb line that where all of faith comes, we have, it's got to be personal and it's of the heart. It's your own heart. We gotta begin and understand that we gotta live. This is how the Schlegels are to live. This is how the Zollies and the Hatmans and the Morrises, this is how the Jenses, right? I don't know, I got you the Jenses, all right? Because you got your kids named, right? Sorensons are to live. This is how you're to live. This is how you're to make your way aware of what you can't see, feel, and touch. Engage. And I we 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 um this uh, uh there's a amplified Hebrews eleven one. It says this, it says, now faith is the assurance and the evidence of things not seen. It's the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by physical senses. So we're talking about faith school and why we're talking about faith and going back to these basics because this is how all the promises of God are appropriated by faith. This is how salvation is appropriated. This is how rest, they entered into rest or they did not enter rest because they didn't believe. You and I can rest when we have faith. There is a rest, there's a peace that passes understanding that you can't by faith. So faith is so vital uh, to, to our lives. And it's not just that word like we use like love, like I love pizza, I love dogs, I love 
we're not going to say cats. Some of you might love cats. <laughs> so let's keep going here. So this morning, um, we're going we're gonna, to, I got my red pen. And uh, the title of this morning's message is Present and Accounted For. Levi Smith. Okay, absent. <clears throat> Zolly, absent. Samuel Schlegel, absent. Daryl Brents, present. Docky Brasher, Docky Brasher, Docky, Docky, absent. Jason Hop, present. Mike Shepard, present. Let's see here. Okay. I got an 80-year-old gentleman that had a birthday yesterday. Um, let's see here. Let's see. No, he's not here this morning. Rod McLean. Uh, Cheryl. <laughs> Tammy Montgomery. Tammy Montgomery. Here, present. Peanut. Here. Present. Bill Hollahan. I love it. This is what I was wanting to get to. There's something about being present. And here's the deal. When the word of God is present, so will faith. Faith will be present where the word of God is. Present and accounted for. Faith is accounted for where the word of God is present. Where the word of God is not present, there is no faith. You know, we have this idea, it's really interesting how, even how, this is how class starts. Even still, I actually called Brad Johnson this morning. I was like, hey, man, it's been a while since I've sat in school and said, heard my name and had to say here or present or, you know, or if somebody speaks up for somebody else, you know how that goes. Um, and, but I still remember at the start of the class, the teacher would call a name. If you didn't say something, they would actually mark you absent. And, you know, if you don't say something, faith is absent. You can be here and say nothing. Because, well, I don't know what the response is. What is he trying to get me to say? Like, but you just say nothing. Kyle Morris. Like, so this is good. This is good that we would learn to respond that, 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 that faith speaks. Faith speaks. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, and 10 that we believe in our heart and we say with our mouth. And co- in, in verse 10 it says, for it's with the heart we believe, but it's with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Our mouth must be engaged if faith, if we, we think we're present, but our mouth doesn't move, you're not here. Right. Let me say it this way. Faith is not there. Right. You know what is there? A different word. There's a different word there. There's a different word there. When our mouth won't side with what God says, it's because we're unconvinced of what God said, or a different word is stronger, and so we keep silent. We're going to get there. We're going to look at the scripture here, but God wants to move your and my mouth so he can move your and my feet, in the sense, or rudder our lives, steer our lives. Our mouth is, is vital to what you and I hear, but also believe there is some do with what you get. There's some words, there's, and faith is present. Faith is present. It says this, we'll just go to Romans chapter 10, uh, verse 17. Romans 10, verse 17, if you put that on the screen. This is why we got to have our pens and papers and, and our notebooks. How many of you brought your textbook this morning? Anybody brought their textbook? Yeah, hold it up and wave the devil. Make, make him mad a little bit. See, I got it. You're not taking my word? All right. So consequently, faith comes... By hearing, it doesn't say from having heard, does it? So that's present. Hearing is present. It's not a past tense. I heard once. It's like I ate once. It's like I went to school once. Anybody planning on going to school Monday morning? No? Matthew's like, no. (laughs) It's a graduated last year. I'm not going to school. I am done with that. It's interesting. 
how we are going to go to school tomorrow morning because we realize that it matters whether or not we're there because we're going to be prepared for tomorrow by being there. We're going to be prepared for our ne- or the future because we were there that day. And not just one time. But faith is in the present. Now, or consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. It, or you'd say it this way. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. The word, if you put me up a different translation, anything, New King James, something like that. The word of Christ, all of these, all of this, here's a little history real quick, or a little understanding. The New Testament's written in Greek, okay? So no matter how it's translated in all of our English, there, there'll be sections of words like the word about Christ. That word, the word about Christ, it actually is the word rhema. So faith comes by hearing, and uh, you understanding, or hearing is when when the word of God is read, rhema or the spoken word comes to your heart. This is what happens. When you open the word of God, and this is why it's so important, you'll begin to recognize uh, how to walk by faith and not by sight because you'll have a word where Christ speaks. He'll speak to your heart. When you open the word of God, what will happen is you'll, you'll hear something here. It's just like sitting in, in, in church, you'll hear pastor say something, but hopefully that pen's writing some things that the pastor didn't say and the Holy Ghost is saying to you. When you open this, when you open this up, you'll find that there's things that are written here that, that uh, he's talking, and yet he's giving you an answer that isn't verbatim here. Because the Holy Spirit is... It, or, or the rhema, the spoken word. There is a spoken word to you and me. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word or the, the word rhema of God. The spoken word of God. There is a spoken word that you and I must hear for us to have faith. You can't have Joe's faith. Because Joe has faith and Joe said it. That's great. It's great the pastor said it. But you know what? whose voice you need to hear? Christ's. The Lord's. You got to hear God say it. When you open the word, when you open the word, when you're hearing the word of God, you are present for Christ to speak to you. You are present for the Lord to speak to you. But when I don't open it, well, it, you might be present, but it's kind of like this book can just sit there and we just go our days and go our ways and go without ever acknowledging the fact that he might be speaking, just engaging our day, starting our day, just uh, living our life by faith, by hearing what God says and his spoken word to me about everything. There, there's, there, there's, he cares about everything. Matter of fact, you know, it's, it's crazy this morning, um, you know, when you have friends too, you talk about Everything. You talk about, or maybe not everything, but you just talk about random nonsense. Like, if you get a big buck picture, you're like, oh, did you see this one? You know, God wants to hear about, oh, did you see this one? Oh, did, did you see the sunrise? Yeah, I made it. Did, that was amazing. Did you see that high, like, just wow. He wants to hear about these things. All right, let's keep going here. So, um, let's go, let's go to... Um, so we know that faith does it. it doesn't say that faith comes by having heard. It says faith comes by hearing. So faith is very much, it's, it's in our present tense. And um, can I say it this way? Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing God say to you. This is the rhema word. This is God's spoken word to your heart. Where does he speak? Here. Where is faith held? Here. Where does God look? The heart. Where does he, where does he speak? It's interesting. He deals with the inner man. He deals with you because you're a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body, but he deals with you here. This is why as a young, as a young man or a young lady, you can be just young, five, three, four, five, six, and it, your spirit's alive and, and engages with the Lord. Matter of fact, not three, four, five, six, born, just born. There's this breath, there's a spirit that God breathes and places inside of every child that's alive to God. Matter of fact, there are, there are some two-year-olds that are as, as, as advanced spiritually as some 40-year-old 
20 years saved Christians because of their engagement with the Lord. Not on the side, but having hearing and checking and singing and just from just that conversation with the Lord. So just because you've been saved a long time doesn't mean you're grown up. The Bible says we're deceived when we don't do anything with the word. Let's keep going here. So um, why is it so important for us to hear a message from the Lord about our daily lives? Because salvation comes through a word. Salvation comes through a word. You can see that in Romans chapter 10. That it, uh, as you go through 9 all the way through verse 17, it says, how are they going to hear unless somebody tells them? But how is someone going to tell them unless they're sent? And then it says, then how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news? That's great. Let's go to Acts chapter 11. Let's look at this, the same kind of uh, um, example here. And this is the story of Cornelius. And uh, for, mm, for time's sake, I'm just going to hit 13 and 14, but I want to just go to in, in, in talk about the previous 12 verses, okay? So there's this righteous man who was a giver. He was generous, and it says that his, his giving came up before the Lord. So we know that God sees our giving. We know that Jesus watched the giving. We know that here his alms and his generosity came up before the Lord. This is a guy that doesn't know the Lord. He is of Roman descent, and, and this is the very first, first man that's the gent- a Gentile, not a Jew, that, that here we are, they, this, there's a guy sent to this family, okay? Um, I would say that, not the very first man. This is a, a, somebody that God singles out, if you will, and says, I'm going to bring Christ to you. But this is the one that Paul shares the message to the Gentiles. I believe it's the first man. Some people would argue, I mean, uh, in, in Acts chapter 2 when they were in Jerusalem and the Holy Spirit fell and, and the message of Christ that there was people from other places there might have been a Gentile in there and all that kind of stuff. Okay, great. But this is the first account of a Gentile man who the message of Christ was sent to. And so this, the giving came up and, and an angel of the Lord appeared to Cornelius and says, now I want you to send to Joppa. I want you to go and find this man and, and, and he's going to bring to you a message of salvation so that your whole family would be saved. Let's read it here. And this is also where Peter it catches that the, the vision of the sheet coming down, and there's the, all these animals, and he says, the Lord says, rise, kill, and eat. And he's like, not so, Lord, for that's unclean. And the Lord does it again. He says, don't call unclean that which I've purified. So in Christ. So now it's like this grafting in. This when We're not Jew, Jews. We're not of that lineage, but we're Gentiles. But Christ made a way in. And he said, now I don't call you unclean. I call you clean because of Christ. And so now here's this invitation where the Lord sent an angel. And he said, I'm going to send somebody to you that's outside of there. And you're going to bring to something to them, a word, so that they'd be saved. So now look at this. He told them, so this angel appears. He told us how he had seen an angel in this house, and say, send to Joppa for Simon, who's called Peter. So Cornelius, he sees an angel. Wow, isn't that cool? Wouldn't that be cool to see an angel? Faith comes by seeing angels. Faith comes if I could just have a miracle. Have something. You know what? Faith comes if I pray really hard. I've got to pray, pray more for faith. I've got to pray more for faith. No? Does it say, does it say that? I mean, we think, if I just saw an angel, if I just could see a miracle, if I could just, I just, I know, I just need to pray harder for faith. Well, then you're saying that God hasn't dealt you the measure that you need. No, God has dealt every man, recorded in Romans, the measure of faith. This is why we shouldn't be thinking highly of ourselves, it says. Because he gives us, even our victory, it comes from a word that he spoke. So it's God holding the other end. It's like you and I getting out of the pit because we held onto the rope, but he's the one that pulled the rope. So he said, uh, so, so he told us how he had seen an angel in his house and said, uh, and the angel said, send to Joppa for Simon, who's called Peter. And this is what the angel told him. How many of you know the angel uh, would say what the Lord said to tell him? He said, he will bring you a message. He will bring you a word. He'll bring you a message. He'll bring, uh, your, your Bible might say a word, a message. He'll bring you a message which you and all your household will be saved. It matters. The word matters. The word that you hear matters. Salvation, it's by grace, but it's through faith. 
You and I need to hear that they, a message. If there's no message, if there's no word, there's no faith. If there's no, if there's no message, there's, there's no salvation. The word of God is what gives you and me a message for salvation. So that by, in other words, that you and I could lay hold of something uh, concerning whatever it is that we're needing, uh, the hand of God concerning our finances, the hand of God concerning our healing, the hand of God. We, we just put up there, 2 Corinthians 1.20. We went over it during uh, communion. He said that all of the promises of God, he did his part. He did his part by sending Christ, and they're yes in Christ. He said yes. He said yes. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say about, you're not going to say anything unless a word of God is present concerning that situation. You won't say anything. You will be unaware. You won't have an amen because you weren't a part of that prayer because you weren't present when it was being taught. You were absent and unaccounted for. You, we didn't put what God was, what he was teaching, the teacher was teaching that day. You're, sometimes we think that, well, God will get it to me if he's that good. Yeah, but you know, you could still stay in second grade because for 15 years and be born again because you don't put yourself present. So you're absent and unaccounted for. And so faith is absent and unaccounted for. And you're taking tests that you were meant to pass with flying colors. But I don't have a present word. Because faith is present. Faith's not past. Faith's not past. Faith is present. And because you don't have a present word, you don't have a response. So it's like not being present in the prayer. You don't say amen. There's amens that are to be spoken in our daily lives. In other words, the release of our agreement concerning our tomorrow. And so what happens is, is we're, we're, we're living lives uh, like cramming for tests. Cramming for faith tests. When there was a spoken word that was present for our lives and he was preparing us for what was tomorrow and as we saw that we would say thank you Lord, yes and amen, our amen and our amen, he's preparing us for what's tomorrow but we don't even know that we, there's no value in that today because we don't see what we feel, think, touch, other, that's all we see. We don't see what we don't see. We're, let me say it this way, we're unaware of what we don't see. So we live according to our senses. We live carnally minded. The Bible says that when we live carnally minded, this is Romans chapter 8, that when we live carnally minded, that way is the way of death. But to live a life after the Spirit of God is life. So what am I aware of? What are you and I aware of? Are we aware that there's a word for, that the teacher teaches every day? He desires for you and me to be with him today. God desires for you and I to be with him and him to teach and to take us through and prepare us for what tomorrow holds. You think God could, if he knows the end from the beginning and you're his child and he's prepared good things for you to walk in, how many of you believe that he would teach you today about what you're going to need for tomorrow? Absolutely. Absolutely. He'll teach you today for what you need tomorrow. There's a word today for what you need to tomorrow. But just because there's a word, uh, I love, Jeremy Pearson said this. He said, if God has called you, he, if he directed you to go to a meeting and you're not there, God's still speaking whether you're there or not right. to you. Right. Right. We say it this way. If, um, if school starts at 830, whether you're there or not, they're teaching math. And there just might be some things that you didn't learn. And you wonder why you're struggling uh, because you weren't there when the times tables were memorized. And we were trying to pass our math test, high school math test, but I wasn't present at the times tables. We're going to be struggling. We're going to have to go back to the basics. This is why we're going back to faith school. Back to faith school is this. Faith comes by hearing. Not because you have a scripture memorized. Can I tell you, I could quote a lot of scriptures. Things pop up out of here that I didn't even know I knew, but they just come out. But that's not enough. You say it this way. That's not faith. For me to just live off of a memory of yesterday. That's not faith. That's not a present word. What you'll find is this. 
you'll find, and we're, uh, let's see, maybe we'll go to one piece here, uh, one scripture here. But you'll, how many of you ever heard of mustard seed faith? This is a show of hands. Raise your hands if you heard mustard seed. So everybody here is kind of aware of this concept of mustard faith. And mustard seed is just a little bitty, right? Just a little. How much faith is uh, mustard seed? Just a little. So how much, and he said, and the Lord says, if, you'll, if you have mustard seed faith, you'll say to this mulberry tree, be plucked up and cast in the sea. He said, if you have faith just this big, you'll say to this mountain. He said, uh, if you have faith just this big, the, the faith is like a mustard seed. It's, though it's a small little seed, all, it, it holds such great things. Like the, this little seed, the birds in the air make their nest. Right? So there's this passage of faith and mustard seed faith, Right? But if you look at these, the context of, of what he's talking about in those moments, he said uh, the, 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 there was a demonic uh, um, a, a, a boy that was possessed by a demon. And the, the disciples couldn't cast this demon out. And there was commotion. And Jesus said, what's going on? And uh, let's, I think I have this one. No, let, let me just, we'll go. I think I have this one in my notes. Um, but let's go, to, let's go to a different one. Let's talk about the one where he's talking about unbelief. Uh, when they said, how many times should I forgive my brother? Up to seven times? Up to 70 times seven. And they're like, oh, Lord, increase my faith. And he says, you don't need more faith. You have faith the size of a mustard seed. You'll say to this mulberry tree, be plucked up and cast in the sea. If you have faith. You know what, what they're, why they're saying they, and why they don't have faith, they don't need this much faith, is because the word that they hold in their heart is what their brother did wrong to them, not, what, not a God word. They don't, all they need is a God word. See, faith is present. Faith is not past. So, so why do I struggle to forgive my brother? Because the present word that my heart holds is what my brother did, not what God did. You don't need more faith. You just need a present word. Just because you heard about how much God loves you, you, have you ever been in a service? Maybe you've been, or, or you've been struggling with forgiving somebody, and you just, you are justified. You know, you got all the reasons. You've up one side, down the other, and all of your friends agree. Even if you hadn't told them, they would. You've already talked to, had the conversation six times. And so, and yet, yet your prayers are being hindered, because the Bible says that, that our prayers are hindered in this way. And yet, someone can read the scripture about a man who was forgiven of much. And yet, and he, and he laid every, his life down to this, and yet the guy that was forgiven of little. You remember this passage? Okay, you're sitting there, and a pastor opens the word of God, and you were just hell-bent on doing something. You were just, and the word of God comes. And somehow, it breaks inside, or Hebrews 4.12, it's sharp. Sharp, able to divide even soul and spirit. And what's going on in here? He's able to get a word in here. And you say, God, I'm sorry. What, what changed? Faith. You got a little word. Oh, just you, you got a little word of God instead of that. All the other words, you just got a little word of God, and, and that's the word your heart held. You're not holding, but you can't hold both. It's not your faith, it's your unbelief, is what he said. The faith's not the problem, it's the fact that you're holding the unbelief. It's that you're holding the word about what they did. That's what the problem is. And if we go to the demonic boy, he said that these ones only come up by prayer and fasting. Why fasting? Because you got to deny this body, you got to deny this senses, you got to deny how this feels and wants food and wants its the head hurts when you're eating, but you, your your ears start ringing because you haven't had caffeine. You're the fast. These kinds only come up by prayer and fasting. What he's saying is this kind of unbelief. In other words, where you and I are not given to our senses, just like the, the disciples when they saw every account of this demonic boy, he not demonic boy, this demonic spirit possessing this boy, he shrieked. In other words, outward show. He threw himself in the fire. He foamed. He flopped. He did all kinds of stuff. He made a show. Why? Because he was trying to appeal to senses. And even to Jesus, he have tried to appeal to his senses. And Jesus is like, come out. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. 
You know, I was interesting. I was as I was studying this passage. I'll, I'll give you this passage. I just basically taught it and quoted it, quoted it. But it's in Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Uh, I'd say probably starting mm, probably starting around. I don't have the whole passage. I'd say probably starting around verse 13. But this is verse 20 where it says um, that it. You don't have enough faith. You just told them, I tell you the truth, if you have faith, even the smallest mustard seed, you say to this mountain, move from here. Um, I don't know what I was talking about. I just went, woo, squirrel. Uh, let's, let me back up here, because I, 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 I scrolled down and I saw some other notes, and then I took a trail, and uh, sometimes you just can't look. You just got to talk. Um, Thank you, Lord. Where were we? What were we talking about? Yeah, I know that. I know. So that was the that was the passage of of the the demonic, uh, you know, being cast out. But I had I was going somewhere. Yeah. So the enemy would love to get you and I to an outward just look at the outward show, and and this is why he says that this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. In other words, denial of yourself. Uh, this outward man, the right to call the shots. That's what fasting is, is when we deny this outward man the right to call the shots. Sometimes this is where we need to be, where we're navigating our family because of what things look like, and we, uh, we need to yield here. We're parenting out of a place of the wrong place, all right, um, because we're doing it by our senses. So um, we know faith comes by being present and accounted for. Let's, uh, let's just jump down to... Let's go back to Romans chapter 10, 9, and 10. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For it is with the heart one believes unto righteousness. It is with the mouth confession is made the salvation. So there's two parts. You've got to hear the message, but you also got to agree. Being, faith being present is you've got to be present, but you also have to be accounted for. Sometimes when, when, we're not, when it's not accounted for, when I won't move because of what my wife would say, there's, there's husbands in here, because of how you feel like you're perceived, you won't open your mouth in your home to fight the fight of faith because, well, you, maybe you just cussed at the lawnmower or, or whatever. And yet inside, there's faith and there's a word from the Lord, even though you missed it. And you're so aware of how you missed it, you won't engage and be present and accounted for and let faith be released in your home in the situation because of an outside word that your heart holds of what they're going to think. Faith, faith hears but also says. So also says, you and I have to use our mouth to activate faith. It is with the heart we believe, but it's with the mouth confession is made to salvation. And so many times the enemy, why is he doing that? Because your heart can hold faith. Your heart can hold faith. Your heart can hold trust. But he wants to keep your mouth shut. So he talks to you about you. He talks to you about... So you just keep it inside. And so you're present. Faith's present. Levi's here. He didn't know. He was the first one called out. Levi Smith. He's here. He's here. But he's accounted for now. It... We can sit, we can have faith on the inside, we can have what God has said, but because now a different word, uh, uh, why do I have to speak up? Mm. There's some people that kind of mumbled, you know, I'll get, I, got, I put their names down here. <laughs> we want to go back and get a little docky. Hey! hey! <laughs> there is a boldness. When you have a conviction or when your heart holds God's word, you're not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. When your heart holds a word, you're not ashamed. So two things. You hear for faith to be present. So it's rather present and accounted for. I want faith to be present and accounted for. I don't want to have faith present and unaccounted for. I don't want to be a pastor that preaches faith on Sunday and Monday. Faith, where is it? It has left the building. Pastor's here, but faith is not. 
You can go home and you can have, but where's faith? It's present, but let it out here. God said this, here, amen, here, amen, here, amen. Here. So you got to be here and say, those two things, here and say, Romans chapter 10, verse 10. So present and accounted for. Faith is a present word from the Lord. That's what faith is. Now faith is. When is faith? Yesterday? Now. now. Faith is a present word from the Lord. So if there's faith for healing, it's because you got a present word from the Lord. If there's faith for your finances, it's because you got a present word from the Lord. And guess who's with his word? God. So you got a present word from the Lord. That's what faith is a present word from the Lord. So you can add your amen because you're present. He's present. God said this. Oh, cool. He said amen. Amen. We do it at dinner all the time. Hope you think about this. We do it at dinner all the time. Someone because we're present for a prayer to bless the food. We say amen. If you're present with the word of God, if you'll put it before you, God will say amen. He'll say, I want to show you how I'm your redeemer. I'm your shield. I'm the one that goes before you, favor. And he says, Amen. And you go, Amen. I got favor with you. God and man. I was dreading that going into this and blah, 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 blah. I was scared of that. I was dreading that. And the Lord said, I wanted to show you you had favor here. And you go, amen. Amen. And you stood in agreement with that. And faith is a... Now you, you, your approach is different, isn't it? Now you're walking by faith. You're making your way. You're advancing by faith, not by sight. And now you're at rest and you're not tormented. All right. Let's keep going here. We're going to end with this uh, passage. Um, Thank you, Lord. Uh, again, if the word, I'll just repeat this again. If the word is not present, faith will be unaccounted for. Faith will be absent and unaccounted for if the word's not present. Um, let's go to... Uh, thank you, Lord. Let's go all the way down, and we're going to close with the, these passages. So... Let's get to school on time. This is what I want to close with. Is this, this is the do, to do. You're like, oh, you're going to put me in a box? Yeah, like your employer. Come on. Like the school teacher. I've never seen moms get ready so fast or not get ready and throw their stuff in the car and, and kids are down. You know? Why? Why? Why, why, why? Tell me. Tell me why. Because one, when one in authority sets a time, you will find it easier to be present. When one in authority sets a time, yep. you'll find it easier to be present. Hey, tomorrow morning, Brad, we're, uh, your boss just called. I know you normally come in at nine, but tomorrow we're starting at eight. What time are you going to be there? Eight. Okay. Why? Because somebody in authority over you set a time? Well, that's not when I feel like going. Okay. When somebody in authority over you sets a time, you'll find it easier to be there. You know why we so often struggle to make it here? Well, has the Lord set a time? Talking about living your days, walking by faith, hearing. When does the Lord tell you, when is he saying, this is the time? Because you know what we say, oh, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to put it there. And, I, and what ends up happening, because there's not a set time on it, there's not space, there's not margin, there's not any of that. And what happens is, is this, because, well, the Lord knows my heart. Yep, he knows that you are absent and faith is unaccounted for. And the very battle that you were, are coming into, that he had a word for, well, Thank you, Lord, for, I'm just going to call on the mercy of God all while my, I'm attacked when I'm supposed to be just walking in victory. All right. So, again, you can write this down. When one in authority sets a time, you'll find it easier to be present. So, <clears throat> I want to close uh, with Proverbs chapter 8 and Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs 8, 17 and Proverbs 13, 24. 
Proverbs 8, 17, and Proverbs 13, 24. And the Powerball is Proverbs 13, 24. In other words, we're writing down numbers here. Sometimes um, we, if we wrote them down like somebody gave you the lottery numbers, like this could help you win in life and help you. Oh, because, you know, if you won the lottery, and I, I, this came in in a way that uh, just the Lord dropped this last piece in. This would preserve your future generations. Like if you won the lottery, it would change our family tree. It would change everything. This next verse will change your family tree. But let's go to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. It says, um, talking, about, talking about wisdom, I love them, which is God's way, which is a God word. A God word. I love those who love me. And he says, and those that seek me early shall find me. Maybe your Bible says Dil- diligently. But that word means to look early, to look first, or to look diligently. Easter egg hunts, everybody understands this since we're, we're all grown-ups, but how many of you know when the Easter egg hunt commences, when it starts? You don't just kind of, well, I'll get to it when I get to it. How many of you know, if you ever watched an Easter egg hunt, kids are claw, I mean, everyone's out, every man for himself, get there first, get there We do this kind of stuff. If it's like, hey, first one up here to grab this $100 bill, people will be climbing $1 million, okay? $1 million. People will be climbing over each other to get that. They would be seeking diligently. They would uh, put their phone down. They would put their notepad down. They put everything down to get there because it would be the first thing. It would be the only thing. That's what it would be the most important, the only thing. This is what... We go to school because that's the most important thing. We get to work because that's at the, in our mind, i got to be there. But that's the most important thing. He said that if you'll seek me early, if you, if, if you love me, if you, if you realize the value of hearing a word and being taught a word that, that is faith, faith is a present and hold your heart holding a present word of God, you'll be able to walk in victory all the days of your life. You'll be able to say amen and, and to the promises that I'm holding out before you. He says... I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. So diligently and early. Now, this is this last verse. Um, the Lord just kind of threw it in there on me. And so, how many of you know, faith applies to every area of our lives. This is not just a spiritual, like, okay, we've got to have a, you know. This is about raising your kids. This is about the jobs that you take. This is about your witness everywhere you go. This is, faith is, you hear people say, don't talk to me about faith in politics. That's, those are like two things that matter for your whole life. Pray for those in leadership that you would live a godly and peaceful life. Like who, those who lead, it matters who leads. It matters who leads. You, you should be vocal about those kind of things. Just like you should be vocal about faith. So he said, let's go to the, the next verse. So I wanted, this was, a, this was big. Diligently and early. Those who seek me diligently and early. That's first. This is the scripture that we quote. Those who spare the rod spoil the child. You ever heard this? It says, he who spares the rod hates his son. But he, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. In your Bible, depending on what translation you're reading, The word spares and the word promptly are the same word. Spare and promptly. Those words are the same words that we just read in the other verse that said, those who seek me, seek me diligently and early. Diligently and early or first. So here's what he says. He who spares or doesn't see see to it when they're young, right away, I'll get around to it. I'm busy. I'm not going to address my child because I'm busy. So my kid can get away with murder because, well, you're lazy, distracted, too hard. Other things seem more important. You hate your son. You hate your daughter because of sparing. Sparing means not first. 
I remember um, when we first started parenting our kids, uh, Kevin, which is my father-in-law, he would uh, say to the kids, you want to take a trip? Remember that, Ev? <laughs> She's like, mm-hmm. That's it. That's all it took. One word. Want to take a trip? Nope. Straightened up. Why? Because one more time. Because there's one thing that the Bible tells us about rebellion. Like there's, there's foolishnesses within a heart of a child, right? But the rod of it drives it from them. Sometimes and there's rebellion. But sometimes there's just mistakes. Sometimes kids are just kids and they just need to be told to quiet down. And that's just part of parenting. It's part of correcting. That there's somebody in authority over their lives. You know, you can tell your kids to be quiet. You can tell your kids to sit down. You can tell your kids to eat their food. You can tell your kids whatever you need to tell them based on what you think you should do, but you don't want to do because it's a pain in the butt to do. And then I got to fight a battle to do. Can I tell you? The battles get bigger. But he who loves him, what does he do? He does it now. So, hey, buddy, I told you to get off of that. Okay, let's go. Excuse me for a moment. Just walk out of this. Well, I got a priority here. What's my priority? Is my family a priority? Is my family a priority? My family's a priority. You know, my family's a priority more than my phone. My family's a priority more than my friends. My family's a priority more than my job. There's times I've come in late to work because I had to stay up at night talking to my kids till one or two or three o'clock in the morning because it, dealt, it needed to be dealt with promptly, diligently, thoroughly, and now. You don't put it off to tomorrow because then what happens is the severity that it was supposed to be dealt with wanes. I'm not talking about abuse. I am talking about understanding that this pays this. And the wages of sin, it still pays death. But when we don't understand that as a child, when we get older, there's kids driving 90 miles an hour and they end up in a tree because, well, that doesn't apply to me. And that doesn't apply to me. And that doesn't apply to me. I'm just going to allow whatever I think, when I want, how I want, the way that I want. We're talking about changing a family tree. Powerball number right here. Proverbs 13, 24. One, three, two, four. It's almost house in order, isn't it? It's just so close to house in order. 13, 24. He who delays discipline. He who will get around to it, discipline, hates, despises, thinks very little of his son or his daughter. I think that there's, I, I, this is for me, this is for every person here, this is from the Lord, that this is about a test today or a test that's tomorrow. The Lord is doing something today. This is like kind of like, hey, we're teaching math today because you're going to need this tomorrow. This is something for your tomorrow and if we'll get this, you, there are so many tests that you won't have to be jacking with. There are so many things because your kids will just, they'll just know. They'll be taught of the Lord. Amen? Amen. I, so that was for somebody that was from, from the Lord. Um, how many of you know we're going to make an adjustment? We're going to hear from the Lord. Lord, how do you, even in disciplining our kids, Lord, how do you want me to deal with this? Because you know every kid's not the same. But things need to be dealt with. But, but I don't have to deal with Matthew the same way I did with Caleb or Samuel or whatever. But it does have to be dealt with. And the punishment needs to be the punishment. Well, I feel bad. Okay. So we're just going to keep waiting until I don't feel bad. So then I won't have to do anything. Because I don't like my kids. And neither does anybody else. <laughs> neither does anybody else. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand. Thank you, Lord. Present and accounted for in my home. Will I find faith in my home? It will in this house. You know why? Because the word that God puts in me will also come out of this mouth. What I hear 
When I put this before me, you'll find in your home, you'll be talking about what God says about your finances. You'll be talking about what God says about that, getting that big buck this year. Yeah. Just things that well, you can't have faith where the Word of God is not present. This is why he says, if the Word of God is present, you'll say to this mountain, be removed. If the Word of God is not present for that mountain, you're an idiot to start talking to a mountain. And you're going to be a, look like a fool. And then you're going to have questioning of your faith. When you weren't supposed to question your faith because you thought faith was some make-believe, abracadabra, alakazoo, make a wand, get rich quick, make it easy, pass every test by just pushing this magic button, and that's garbage. Faith is a present word of God. That's what faith is. A present word of God. So what's the present word of God for your children? What's your present word of God concerning the time with him? What's the present word of God concerning anything it might be? Even if it's a hard thing to go talk to that person to see things restored. What's the present word of God? And guess what? You'll walk that out by faith and you'll have victory. Back to school. Amen? Father, thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for um, just the application that we hear, but we also say. We thank you for uh, just that you are an authority. We just say that with our, with our mouths, that you're an authority over our lives. We, we look to you. You set our time. Lord, you set our time when we're to be with you. You set, we're looking to you to hear from you. Where do you want us to be? Yeah, we'll walk with you all the days of our life, but Lord, where do you want our undivided attention? Set our time. Lord, how do we, where and how are we to, uh, where, where are we not disciplined on our children? Or where have we spared and, and let up? Or it show us how to not overcorrect, but just do it in line with you. Just doing it first. Just demonstrating our love for our kids. We thank you for it. Your word to us today. We thank you that faith in this house is present and it's accounted for. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. Amen, amen, amen. Well, praise the Lord. God bless you. Wednesday night, we have a night of prayer. Uh, so we'll see you guys Wednesday night. Otherwise, we will see you at Battle of the Bone, maybe in the concession stand. Um, anyway, God bless. Have a great week.